I don't know what you think about science fiction. A lot of you think yourselves quite above that. The amazing thing about science fiction to me is that it projects us into places that we have not been and sometimes raises questions that we have not considered. That particular movie was very popular about an alien who came to visit, curious, one quite different who came to visit, interessante, eh? It was thousands of years ago and thousands of miles away. And yet one person writes, in the midst of all of our madness and craziness, there is still something about that child and that place that simply will not let us go. Of all of those so-called encounters in our human experience, this is an encounter which somehow or the other stands in its own place and shouts in its own voice. One of the lovely things about this close encounter is that it depends on this fundamental truth. God is. It's easy in a world like ours to think differently, to think that all of this that we call life is just sort of accidental, and it happened. Bishop Stokes, we have kidded about him for a long time, He's the fellow that talks like this. He loves to use the word significant. <laughs> Sent a Christmas card. And in his Christmas card, I could just see him in, in, standing in front of us in systematic theology saying, this is his Christmas card. There are two alternatives. The one alternative is to think that this mysterious, amazing, and complex universe has nothing but a whole bunch of accidents or the second is that somehow or the other it's carefully planned by one much greater than we. I don't know how God comes to you or where the conviction that you believe in God comes from. But for me it's in a thousand different packages. One of them named Carson Keith Furness. They handed him to me in swaddling clothes. Close encounter. And I held him for a little while, and the only part of his anatomy that you could see other than his little face with his white cap were his two fingers that he had on his little chin, like this. And I looked at the fingernails. They seemed polished and manicured, just exactly the right length, not too short and not too long. And I had a close encounter, kind of. Christmas. A very dear doctor friend of mine who had dealt with so many of those treacherous, difficult world realities said to me once, 99% of the time I'm an atheist, but 2% of the time I'm a very strong believer, and that 2% almost always has to do with looking at a newborn child. The world can be born to a faith that says God is. Christmas says God not only is, but comes to us. That's a good word. Not God far away. Seek the Lord while he is near. The God who is not content to be God sort of in charge of things, but the God who somehow or the other has, at least according to the biblical witness, a need to be coming in our direction, seeking relationships, opening opportunities, looking for possibilities. There's lots of things I don't understand about God in the Old Testament particularly, and lots of things I don't understand about God in the New Testament, but one thing I do feel very deeply in my soul of souls is that this God wants a close encounter with you, a close relationship with me too, and with anyone who would come, who oh, anyone who is hungry, anyone who is thirsty. I remember a district superintendent of all people, one of those big wheels. Didn't Willis preach well for us last week? Getting up and saying in front of the people, boys, at then, in those days we were just boys. Now he would say boys and girls, but he said, boys, I'm lonely and I'm hungry. God comes to us. 
And the other thing that the scripture says so very much is not only that God is and comes to us, but also that God is for us. If God be for us, who can be against us? I think that's neat. One of the stories I love to repeat, and I'm good at that, especially when you've been in one place for almost 40 years, is a story about one of our members who used to sit right back there in the back, and he's in glory now, sitting in another place. We're surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses. Don't ever forget that. One prayer meeting, I said, if you only had one word and you could take away every single word from the vocabulary and there was just one word left, what would your word be? And people begin to say things. Luella said, Jesus, <laughs> you know, and other people said salvation and faith and hope and love. And what was funny was my position in the front, I could watch Uncle Matt in the back and everybody, every time they said a word, he'd shake his head no. And so finally I saved him to the end. I said, Uncle Matt, you got a word? He said, I certainly do. I said, is it a good one? He said, it's better than anything else that's been spoken here. And I said, well, would you mind telling us what it is? And he said, it's a very good word. And I said, well, tell us. He said, it's a biblical word. I said, will you please tell us? He said, it's in the gospel of Matthew in chapter 1. And he said, his name shall be called Emmanuel, which means God with us. And Keith, folks, if God is with us, we've got all the rest. Salvation and faith and hope and love. God with us. God not only with us in the good times, but God with us in the bad times too. It's a secret that you can't tell, and I shouldn't do it publicly, but I got permission. They brought Carson in and said he has failed the hearing test for the second time. Tracy has a hearing problem. And, of course, she mentally began to cry. A little bit later, the nurse came back and said, don't pay attention to that. All these kids have stuff in their ears. <laughs> <laughs> and eventually, it'll probably be fine. There are other tests to follow up, and uh, we can do something about it even if there is difficulty. We don't know. But you know in that strange moment when we all stood there just looking at each other and Tracy was quietly crying, um, all of us there, there was a sense in which the nurse's voice, hey, don't make so much over this. It's okay. Some of the other kids failed today too. It became a close encounter, encounter with God. Here's a girl named Anne Kimiel who has written a number of books. One of the books is entitled, I Love the Word Impossible. Um, her own story, interesting, trying to have children, had a bunch of miscarriages. As a result of that, became a drug addict, couldn't get off of the painkillers for a long, long time, really messed up, and finally found her way from darkness toward light. And she writes this little poem. I thought it was interesting. I love the word impossible. Stay with me on this. It's like joy after sorrow. People being friends after being enemies. Rainbows after drenching rain. A wound that is healed. Sunsets on quiet evenings after hot, noisy, crazy days. Paralyzed parts of you. Injured parts learning to grow strong and useful. Forgiving after wrong. Truth after fog. That's been good these last few days, huh? New love made babies, birds learning to fly and own the sky. Bitterness turned to mellowness, fresh, genuine hope once abandoned, people finding each other at right moments in unexpected, obscure places for God-ordained reasons. This God that comes to us in this strange encounter is a God who comes in our limitations. This is a vulnerable kid in a hick town. And when I say Hicktown, I'm making no reference whatsoever to the people who live there. They're God's children. I'm talking about in terms of the world's view and the world's economy. It was a small town. It's still a small town. It was a poor town. It's still a poor town. It was a town about which they actually said, could anything good ever come out of Bethlehem? Have you ever been Bethlehem? Have you ever been that person that someone wondered about and wondered whether anything good could come from you, could come out of that. As we said in the prayer, you know, when you're standing up to your neck in darkness, it's pretty hard to say yes to a strange, mysterious, and wonderful God that somehow or the other comes in the vulnerability of a baby um, in this limited place a long, long time ago. And yet somehow that God that came is the one that continues to come. And that darkness, which makes it so difficult for us, somehow has been penetrated, sometimes a little and sometimes 
a whole lot. And sometimes, as one of our beloved members put it, just enough to be able to see when you couldn't see. When I began to put this sermon together, I said, you know, it sure would be nice to have some kind of a wonderful story because I love the narrative. But I couldn't come up with a story that I thought would be appropriate. It's all his story, our stories, Christ's story. All of history is the story being told. And so then I said, because I was trying to write this, going from place to place and trying to get things done like all of us, and I said, could you at least, God, give me a little something to wrap up the sermon? And uh, God didn't say anything to me. God <laughs> talks to all these other preachers. It just ticks me off. <laughs> hey, uh. And I got a number of church members he talks to all the time, you know. But what I basically get is uh, sometimes uh, an inner impression and sometimes at the keyboard of the computer. And so I sat down and I wrote, Oh, the world is still dark, and we have long and far to go. But the darkness has been touched by light, divine light, his light, our light. Things change. Our yes may be with your fingers crossed, or with your heart in your mouth, or your yes may be bold and strong. However, we bear witness, the close encounter came and stays. Everything has changed from now on. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, it's the strangest darn thing because in our mind we can see the little baby. In our mind we can see the boy growing up. In our mind we can see the man. In our mind we can see the crucified man. In our spirit's mind we can sort of see the glory and light of the resurrection. But we can't ever find adequate ways to explain it. Maybe it'll just have to be one of those close encounters that can only be explained by our having received it. Maybe that's the best we can do. Thank you for being faithful to us. Give us our encounter, if not today or tomorrow, then soon. In Jesus' name, amen.